As Anthem draws near, so does news coming out. It's coming out from all directions, interviews, PR, you name it, it's happening. So it's no surprise that certain news just slips by me, and thanks to you amazing people that have followed me on Twitter, well, that news has come through you and you've passed it on to me to have a look, and one such piece of news was the Game Rant interview. So I've been asked to give my view and interpretation, so this video is pretty much covering that as well as a couple of other few tidbits that I thought was highly interesting. If you want to be in with a chance of winning a copy of Anthem, simply click on the link in the description below or in the first pinned comment section for a chance at winning that. Simple as that, good luck. There were a bunch of questions, like how did they eventually come to the name of Anthem, why was the name chosen, and other things like this that were more trivial questions, I've skipped past those, however if you feel like you want to go through the whole interview, the link to the interview is in the description below, you can simply go through this. So the first question that caught my interest is about bug fixes, balances, changes for weapons and stuff like this that crop up that usually take a millennia for other platforms to actually fix. How quick can Anthem turn this around? How quick can Bioware apply fixes? To which there are responded, it depends on what we have to do. A lot of the balance stuff is actually driven from the server side, which believe you and me is actually an amazing thing because it gives them complete freedom. So we can theoretically do that immediately, like literally within the first couple of minutes, exactly what I was talking about. Then if we're getting into stuff that requires actual content, code change basically, then it could take anywhere from a couple of days to do something relatively simple to up to potentially weeks if it has to be something major. Which makes sense, if it's something fundamental to the game that's going to require severe code change, then this has to be an actual content push that could require client-side approval, which then has to go through Sony and Microsoft in order to do it. But as long as it is server-side fixes and bug changes and quick pushes, this can be done relatively quickly. Now, I think we can do a lot of the stuff to react to the way people are going to engage with exploits, to deal with features that are maybe broken under certain circumstances just from the server side, which we can do right away, which is pretty damn amazing. So if you remember back to Destiny 1 where Atheon was being pushed off, something like that would likely require a bigger code change. If you look at other issues, like say the 1000 voices on the PC, if you run it at a higher frame rate, it would deal a lot more damage. This would be server side and could be fixed immediately. It wouldn't take four months like it actually did. So stuff like this is pretty damn awesome that they are able to go in swiftly and make these changes, which is really, really good. It also means that sandbox changes and updates and tweaks can be done relatively quickly in a short space of time. So something like every two months is actually a thing that's actually possible here instead of the seven months that other games tend to do. So this next question from Gamerant is actually one that I've actually asked a few times and got no response and I'm really happy that they put this question forward because it's actually made my day. When Cataclysms were originally called Shape of Storms, Anthem lead producer Mike Gamble said in an interview that they could theoretically fit Mass Effect's universe into them. Could Cataclysm's feature crossover events in that regard? Mike Dora responded with, yeah, certainly. Crossovers are not impossible. I don't think we'll go there right away because Anthem needs a little bit of time for its IP to solidify and establish its own boundaries. So what they're saying here is essentially they're completely open to crossovers within their IP, bringing Dragon Age, Mass Effect and things like this into the world of Anthem as a collaboration, as a crossover. They're totally okay with this. They want the brand and IP Anthem to establish itself first, so we probably won't see something like this for at least maybe six months to a year, but the fact that they are actually interested and want to do stuff like this is pretty damn cool and it's actually got me super excited. So the next age-old question, content drought, and how does Anthem plan to remove the content drought that will be there? Seeing as there will be no other mode of play, it will literally just be the game itself with free play, strongholds, contracts and so forth. How does it plan to do this? So this one's a bit lengthy in terms of response, but I think it's really important and I also think it's a really good response and I'll break it down bit by bit. So from progression cycle, the game is designed so that you have several different horizons. So at first, the goal is to get through the critical path, which is the main scenario. Then to get to level 30, which you should be there by the end of the main scenario. If not, you should be very close. Then get a masterwork gear or weapon for every slot, 
then get a masterwork gear for every weapon or slot that has the right infusions, or as they're called, inscriptions, to get you that build that you really want to have. Each of those horizons is designed to be a relatively long chase, but as we know, people get through this super fast, often way faster than we possibly could imagine. And this is true to this day. You'll have a camp where people will just play the content and the original base release content will last them 3 weeks, 4 weeks, 6 weeks, 8 weeks, even up to 3 months. It took my friend almost, when we were playing Destiny because he was playing it so sporadically, it took him almost a whole season of Destiny to get to max level. Whereas if you look at the other camp who was hitting it hard, constantly, every single day, they were max level within 2 weeks. It's a big difference between two weeks and three months, but catering for those two markets is almost impossible. You simply can't do it. However, there is a fine balance that you can try to hit, and this is what they're trying to find here. He continues, then we introduce additional content things where we want to have much quicker conversations with our players than we have in the past, where we are dropping things more regularly, more often, and one of the things on that is cataclysms. It's relatively big, not big like a piece of story DLC we've done in the past, but something to chew on for a while that changes the meta. And I'm really happy that they're constantly talking about changing the meta, they're not going to allow a meta to settle in, because it's obvious that at some point people are going to work out which builds are the best ones to go for, right? It's common sense, it's common knowledge, and it's common practice. Everyone wants to kill stuff the quickest way possible. They're going to equip the build that makes them the most powerful. That's the whole point of these build videos that we'll be creating. So there really is no surprise there. However, the fact that they want to constantly change this, and from the previous question, they have the ability to change the meta relatively quickly with just back-end changes, I think it's really cool that they are being as proactive as possible to make every weapon viable in the world of Anthem. He continues, that introduces new ways to think about the game. And then we can do that on a regular cadence to make it feel like the game is pushing back on you as you're reaching your horizon. And we can then introduce a new horizon, a new goal that keeps you engaged over long term. Again, the point he's making here is, we've got the base content, we want to see how you go through it. We want to see how fast people can churn through this content. Once they've gone through and beaten everything there is and got their builds, then they can decide when they're going to release another stronghold. Will they be releasing a stronghold every month, every three months? And that will all depend on player feedback, how the players tackle the content. The top 1% obviously is going to be blitzing through the content like there's no tomorrow because they'll be playing it day and night. Especially those streaming, they'll be on this 24-7 almost, just literally trying to get the best build out there, the top end gear, and to tackle things, challenging themselves to do it in the quickest time. We already saw in the demo, people were setting up unofficial time trial leaderboards where they were recording the whole event and putting it up to show how fast they did it compared to other people, and things like this will happen. But then you've got the other 90% or 70% who aren't going to be as quick as that 1% and ain't going to be playing it as much. So there has to be a fine balance. But what they're saying here is they will try and cater for both sides of the market and have a release schedule based on that. I think it's really, really important that this is that they can actually do this. And I think it's really good that they're taking player feedback first into everything before they decide to do anything else. So good on you, Bioware. Right, this next one is going to be controversial no matter which way I look at it, and I'm really not satisfied with the response that they gave in regards to it. So Gamerant asks, if PvP ever does get introduced, what would Bioware have to change with Anthem in order to make it fit? So, here we go. One of the major things that not having PvP lets us do is have the four javelin be different from each other. They don't have to be balanced against each other, they just have to be macroscopically balanced and interesting to play in different groups. But they don't have to be a Storm and a Colossus going at each other and there's an equal chance that either one will come out on top. That doesn't need to be a thing we take into account, which is basically balancing. The dreaded word PvE and PvP balancing which has ruined other games like Destiny. At least in my eyes, maybe not in your eyes, but in my eyes the balancing of PvP in games like Destiny has absolutely tarnished it. Warframe tried to go the PvP route as well, they realised it was a bad idea, they abandoned it very quickly. 
so it also lets us do more different weapons that again don't have to take into account the fact that there's a person on the other side of that. Things like the spark beam are very good against AI, but actually probably quite useless if you're using it against somebody who can dodge and get out of the way. If we introduce PvP in the future, there would have to be other criteria where we could narrow that round, which is something I'm totally against by the way, and if this is the case which is basically leading to that, then I hope it never arrives. So that either means a mode where everyone's a storm, where everyone has to be the same javelin, or a mode where gear is restricted in some way, essentially set loadouts. We wouldn't want to do it where we restrict gear for the game as a whole, because that just degrades the PvP experience in the service of PvP. So basically they're against set loadouts. If we were to add a PvP experience in the future, we would want it to be connected to the experience you're having in PvE, but somehow restrained to allow that balance to come in. I say PvE there because I believe it's a typo, but essentially I'm really not satisfied with this. I know a lot of you won't be satisfied and I do understand that. So hopefully at this point I'm all for not having PvP and I just want this topic dead. I probably won't be reporting on this anymore simply because now that I've seen the direction that they are potentially looking at going if they ever introduce PvP, it's not a direction I want to go in. So hopefully we don't ever see it. I know there are people that want it, but this isn't the way. The moment balancing comes in, the power fantasy of PvE gets hurt. If PvE gets hurt, Anthem dies. It's that simple. So, seasonal events, how will they work? So there'll be two things, let's call them real world events, which will be more like Christmas events, Easter events, St. Patrick's Day, where it's a more cosmetic thing. For example, at Easter they'll be doing visual stuff, but like, there'll be a lot more rabbits around because they're the closest thing to rabbits. Easter is associated with rabbits and they'll be putting eggs everywhere, something that can simply be done. It'll be a short, sweet event and something that will engage the community for a few days so they can get all the cosmetics and things like that rewarded. The second thing is cataclysms. Cataclysms are much more of that season, more in the way that something like Diablo has a season, or Hearthstone has a season, where it's a timed event with specific gains to the end of a bigger thing with more story attached to it, with more endgame purpose. So essentially what they're talking about here is two types of events, quick events, content based events. The quick events are like the Christmas, Easter events where they just add a few things into the open world, increase certain things, make it visually pleasing, provide you with a couple of quick quests to go and do. Games like Final Fantasy XIV do this all the time. It's a short, sweet event. You go do the event, you go do the little quests, you go do the little mini games, you get your reward, and you're done. Then you have the second type of events, which are literally story based, much bigger, on a much more grander scale. These ones are the ones that are story related and will engage the players that bit more and for a much longer time. So it's good to see that this sort of seasonal events will be happening in Anthem. Finally, Neil Blomkamp, who you'll know from District 9, Elysium, Chappie and a bunch of other movies, releases following tweet today. Been working on something new, really excited to share this soon. Anthem game. I mean, is this a live action movie that they're going to be announcing? Is this a live action ad? Is this something that they're working on as a DLC to put into the game? I mean, there is absolutely no news for this. It's all speculation. The internet's gone crazy at the moment with this. But the fact that Neil generally works with CGI and robots and stuff like this in his movies, and the fact that he's working with EA and Bioware on something for the Anthem game is really, really cool stuff. This could easily be turned into a movie and it's kind of becoming the movie I didn't know I wanted to watch but it's now becoming something that I want to watch so I'll be keeping a close track on this. Hopefully we get some more news on this. He did say soon so watch this space. And I'm pretty much going to end the video there. I think that covers it for the interview. There was a few more questions but if you want to go through those the link is in the description below so you can go through those if you like. Other than that Thanks for watching everyone, leave your views and thoughts in the comment section below, I do read every single one of them, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Remain legend.